Hey, what's up you guys? Shardimus Prime here, doing another throwback action figure review on technically not a Marvel Legends figure, but this is the Toy Biz Fantastic Four Movies Doombot. This is a grail of a figure. I am so happy to have it. Big thanks to Brett and Fantastic Ferguson's for making this happen and setting me up with this figure over here. Ah, I'm so grateful and happy to have it in hand. Finally, I have a Doombot. This figure has eluded me for many, many, many years and I am quite stoked to have it. And you can see it's still on the blister card and everything. Just a couple little wrinkles right over here, but it's A-OK -okay because I'm going to open this thing. I had a great time at Joe Lanta and damn, yeah, big thanks again, Brett. Really appreciate it. Nothing on the bottom or on the sides of the packaging over here. It does have a try me button on the back so you can see the light up feature functioning right over there. And then on the very back of the packaging, you can see you get some little descriptives on the functions and there's a read up over here and you can see some of the other figures from the wave right down over there. All right, let's get to it and crack this thing open. And if you're trying to get your newer Marvel Legends, you can do so. Oh, big, 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 get your big badass toys at BigBadToyStore.com. Click the link in the description below. <laughs> And here's the Doombot out of the packaging. And this is a very cool looking figure. I love the design of this thing. And we're going to talk about the comic accuracy of this design in a moment. Uh, but yeah, this was really tough to get on this rotating base without falling over because the legs were super loose, just opening it up out of the packaging. And this is brand new, so it's not like it was already played with, but damn it, it quickly felt like it was played with a lot with those legs. But really, I'm stoked to have my hands on this Grail figure over here. It looks dope, so let's get a closer look. <laughs> So here's getting a close look at the head sculpt, and I think this design is very cool. However, I could not find where in the Marvel 616 this exists, and I did a whole bunch of research, and uh, big thanks to the Breakfast Crew for helping out with this. It looked like this might have been one from the Fantastic Four cartoon series, but nope. And this also looked like it was some something from a Fantastic Four video game also, but also nope. So if you know of which comic this comes from, uh, let me know. But uh, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and end on this being just a unique design from Toy Biz to action figure form, which from my recollection, they did only once before with the Ultron figure. Anyway, the head sculpt again looks good. I like that we have some black paint mixed over here, and I love these soft rubbery tubes, especially right here on the neck. That silver paint looks so dope. This is all soft and squishy as well. So the upper torso is all soft and yeah, because the weak legs this fell over on my desk and I think I got a scuff right here from it or somewhere. I don't know. But then there's also parts where there's just paint missing from it and these shoulder pads are super soft. But I love the black paint going over the green. Wish they used a more vibrant gold color. Then you can see some more paint variation right here on the back of it. Look at those tubes. Did they use base strings for this? I have a feeling this was a Dave Cortez sculpted figure with the base strings, which was a Jesse Falcon idea, especially because this was made after the Sentinel Build-A-Figure. So they could have gone with base strings again. Yeah, this right here, it came like that, you know, so Toy Biz did have their defects. But damn, yeah, I, I like how this looks. Like the hands right over here. Nice silver and gray, so they got that changed up. Look at that, that looks pretty damn sweet, man. Almost looks like a Marvel Select, you know? So yeah, it looks pretty dope right here on the front of it. Again, all very squishy right over here. And then you get the lower torso with possibly, you know, more bass strings, I don't know. <laughs> and then you have this whole feature right here where if you click this button, he'll crunch forward. Which is like, what kind of feature is that? But you also get the light up feature too. Now it's actually been working just fine. So that's cool. Missing just a tad bit of paint on the very top of that. So it's glowing through the top of that lens. But yeah, still cool that it has a little light up feature. These discs right here, I feel like should go on the side. I don't know. There's a lot of articulation to get into with this figure. But damn, I love seeing this metallic green over the plastic. That does look very cool. Paint details on this are really neat, man. Look at that. Everything's got a nice silver dry brush over black, looking very cool. So, man, 
Is that more bass strings? And then he's got his Doombot toesies right there. No peg holes at the bottom of the feet, but man, look how loose these legs are. Jeez, awful with the looseness. But anyway, let's get a look at the articulation. So I have my gripes with the articulation, but it's still pretty cool or interesting anyway with these older figures. You can rotate this head side to side and it will pivot in and out a little bit. I mean, you're really just getting side to side motion like that more than anything. Uh, you cannot flip it in and out. It has that light up feature that's kind of anchoring it in there. Uh, you have these shoulders that will rotate all the way around and you can move the shoulders outward. These are all soft. So if you leave that like that, oh, you're going to ruin it. So, you know, try to be careful and mindful with those. You have a bicep swivel. You get the single jointed elbow. You get the wrist that turns side to side. They hinge up and down. You can see that paint chipping off. And then, except for the thumb, you get individual finger articulation, which is neat. Now, there's no joint in the fingers, but they all bend individually at the knuckle. So you can make a spidey thwip pose like there <laughs> if you wanted to. And then you have the diaphragm joint right here, which you can't really turn. It's just that feature with the button and it crunching forward. So you can have them crunch forward by hitting the button. Then you get the waist joint right here that just turns side to side. It wobbles a little bit, but it's really just a swivel. And then you can move the hips on these ball joints outward very far and they move in and they are super loose. Look at that. Oh my God, swinging. Yeah, so it's really tough getting him to stand a lot of times, but I'm going to vanilla pose him on the shelf with a whole bunch of other Dr. Doom figures. So I'm not really that bummed out about it, but yeah, it's tough. I, there's tricks to, you know, use what, what floor polish and stuff like that to tighten those joints so I can mess with it. Anyway, rotates at the thigh rotates under the thigh and then you get the single jointed knee right here and then you get rotation right here at the leg so it's just like a lot of swivel joints all the way through and then it also swivels right here at the ankle but there is no ankle pivot and then you have these three different toe joints so you have a little toe joint there or these little platforms right here and then these will move up and down individually as well so that's pretty cool too actually you can move them separately or together either way now to measure out this figure you could see that it is standing just a little under eight inches tall then for the only doombot comparison i can give you guys we have the cabal three pack dr doom with the doombot head on there and the only other doombot head that's out there is the series two chase variant dr doom I don't think we have any other Doombots aside from that. And then here's the Doombot next to my favorite Marvel Legends Doctor Doom figure in my collection. We have the Super Scroll Build-A-Figure Wave Doctor Doom. And then for the packaging's sake, here's the Doombot next to the Fantastic Four Movies Series 2 Wave Doctor Doom, right? Or is this from Series 1? This is a terrible figure. I've always hung on to it just because I wanted to have a movie Doctor Doom figure in the collection somehow. Uh, but yeah, th this is not from the same wave as this Doombot. I did collect a bunch of these Fantastic Four figures when they came out, but I don't have any of the figures from this set over here. Well, except for now I do have the Doombot. Then here's a Doombot next to the Toy Biz Snapshot Spider-Man, another gift from Brett or No Talent Hack Customs. Big thanks again, bro. You're just knocking off all the grails or all the missing figures I've needed in my collection for many, many, many years. So happy to have these both. Thank you. And then here's the Toy Biz Doombot next to your average six inch scale figure. We have the Marvel Legends Big Time Letdown Spider-Man. Spider-Man. Okay, I do think it is a bit of a letdown of me to assume that just because somebody is green, they're going to be my friend. That's a little ridiculous. So I am just going to say nothing about it at all, except for how nice you look with all that green. So please don't hurt me because I have green and you have green. And we should be... And I hope you guys enjoyed this throwback video. If you did, well, yeah, I could take your thumb and rub it all over that like button. And if you're new here, don't forget to hit that subscribe button as well. Uh, this Doom is, or this Doom bot is very, very cool looking. I am going to have it on display, very Staction figure like. I'm not going to have him in a dynamic pose. I'm going to be happy to have him standing around a whole bunch of extra Dr. Dooms that I have on the shelf. So I am happy to have it. That was my plan to do them right away. Is I just wanted to put them with a whole bunch of Dr. Dooms. If I could have two more of these, though, that would be so damn sweet. But the fact that, you know, it's a very expensive figure and it's very hard to get a hold of. I don't see that happening. But, uh, you know, it, it, one day I might get two more. <laughs> 
<laughs> Don't get me two more. Uh, I'm not asking them as gifts or anything like that. It, it's fun to go on the hunt. So we'll see. Eventually. Maybe like 10, 15 years from now, I'll have three. You know, that's what I'm looking at. So I do like it a lot. It looks really badass. You guys know I love my robots. And I love my bass strings. And I just think this is a very cool design. I do wish this had a solid reference and just wasn't a made-up look. But still, I, I think it's badass. And I know it shot up to around 200 bucks now, uh, mint on card, so it's an expensive figure, but originally it was like 8 bucks, I think, around that time, 2004. I, I want to say it was around the $8 mark. Um, you know, I, if, if I were to just pick one up on eBay, I would aim for a loose one, like around the $100 mark. So looking at those price points, knowing that it's an old school Toy Biz figure, I'm going to give this Doombot a sud rating of... I love it! And I'd like to know what you guys think, so please let me know in the comment section below. If you want to see the latest Marvel news, you can find it all over at MarvelousNews.com. And make sure you follow Joe Lanta on Instagram. I'm going to put a link in the description below. And if you want to follow me on social media, you can follow me on my Instagram account, as well as Facebook, TikTok, and whatnot. And I will catch you guys later. Peace! That's crispy. I just wish it was in the comics. <laughs> All right. Bam. Marvel Legends shirt. Hey, new Shark Miss Prime videos. Hey, you should click one. Yeah, click on one of them. Or subscribe if you haven't.